Welcome to our preview of this year's DC Bar Changing Currents in Employment Law, the DC Bar's three-hour fast-paced fall CLE that previews cutting-edge topics in the employment law field from both the management and the employee side perspectives. I'm Scott Oswald. I am faculty chair of Changing Currents in Employment Law, and I am joined by Cassandra Horton, an attorney at Baker Donaldson. Cassandra, hello. Hi, Scott. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Uh, Cassandra, you're speaking on a panel entitled Viewpoint on Joint Employers, and you'll be focusing on the joint employer relationship as defined by the National Labor Relations Board. Give us maybe some of the key things that uh, attendees can take away from this year's Changing Currents in Employment Law and introduce us to your co-panelists. Sure, well, I'll start out with the introduction. As you said, my name is Cassandra Horton. I am an associate at Baker Donaldson in our Baltimore office. I am a management side labor and employment attorney and my practice focuses on traditional labor, employment and investigations. My co-panelist is Katie Atkinson. She is a principal at Atkinson Law Group in Bethesda, Maryland. And Katie's practice uh, focuses on employment side labor and employment. And so in our presentation, we will both discuss the National Labor Relations Board Joint Employer Rule, which is the test that the board uses to determine whether there are multiple employers for a certain set of employees. This rule is in flux. And so a couple of key takeaways from our panel will be what is the current state of the law at the time of the panel, What's the history? How did we get there? And then we will both provide um, takeaways from the employer and employee perspectives. So Cassandra, uh, in light of the fact that this rule, as you pointed out, is in flux, but it's still out there, what kind of advice are you giving to your corporate clients right now about what to do if they're facing kind of a joint employer issue? The advice that we're currently giving to our clients is that they should look at their agreements to see what it says in terms of the level of control that their subcontractors have over their current employees. Uh, it's important to look at that because that is the important part of the rule, is that the test determines what those agreements say, what level of control that can find, that can deem an employer to be joint employers. Other advice that we're giving is that since it's the National Labor Relations Board that has issued this rules, there are implications on a labor uh, landscape. So for example, if two employers are determined to be joint employers, then both employers may be on the hook for collective bargaining. Both employers may be on the hook for unfair labor practices. So it's important for my clients to know where the law stands and the implications um, if the rule changes or remains the same. Sandra, thank you. Look forward to this panel in October and we look forward to seeing each of you on Tuesday, October 29th at 6 p.m. either in person or virtually at the DC Bar headquarters. You can register using the CLE tab at dcbar.org.